Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today we're going to make this super accurate miter sled for the table saw and it's really easy, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is to glue a couple of these boards together because when these are laminated it makes them very stable for our fence. I'm just going to take a quick minute and undo these clamps, but first of all I just want to double check the moisture content here and that's 8.4, 8.5, that's excellent, that's good. So the, I'm at the table saw and I've cut my base here, which is 18 this way and a little over 19 this way, just turned out that way. Uh, and I'm actually using some rough stock because it's pretty flat and it'll work fine for what I'm doing. What I want to do now is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the miter strip. Now I cut my own, I buy the raw material and cut my own and mine is very, uh, it's very accurate. If you see when I push down on it, uh, there's no gap between the board and the miter gauge material. If you are purchasing them, you might need to use uh, some coins to lift that up a little bit and it wouldn't hurt for me to do that even now but you can see now there's a little bit of a gap in there now which means that the miter slot material, the miter slot blank is in close contact with the wood but I'm not going to use that because I don't really need to do that so I'm going to take that out. Now the next thing I'm going to do is aligned it and if you'll notice mine it's just a little bit longer than my wood and that's perfect because I like to see it protruding a little bit out the front here and in my case I'm going to leave it out uh, probably a couple of inches or so. Now to set mine up what I'm going to do I'm leaving the blade a little bit proud and I'm going to move it back just a little bit and I'm, I've already countersunk my holes from the bottom and I'm going to attach mine from the bottom and that means what I need to do now is I need to attach this and if you don't have an air nailer I'm going to air nail mine if you don't have an air nailer you can just drive nails into it a few little um, finished nails or something into it then I'm going to take it flip it over and put the screws in The next thing I want to do now is to drive a screw into this side of the back because I'm going to need to pivot it to find out where exactly the right angle is. The next thing I need to do is to align this back fence now. And a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people cranking up the table saw blade and aligning the square using the table saw blade and I really don't like that. Um, for one reason, we never align anything to the blade on a table saw. Everything on a table saw is aligned to the miter slots. The blade is aligned to the miter slots. Um, the trunnions, the inside are aligned to the miter slots. So uh, everything here on this sled wants to be aligned to the miter slots. And I can do that a couple of ways. I can tilt the, the, the blade up. See, I'm at the back of that miter slot and I can set that uh, back fence up by doing that but what I like to do because I want to drag this back over the back end of the saw to clamp it I'm using this piece of wood and you can see that it's a little bit loose in here and it's like that on purpose because I have these really thin wedges I always have wedges around you never know when you need to use shims and what I do is just drive those in And what that's doing now is driving this wood. So this wood now is nice and flat all the way along straight against this miter slot. And now I can take this, let's put that blade down. 
And now I can take this and align it to that piece of wood and I know that it's absolutely flat. And now I can realign that fence. And I'm going to put, I'm going to slide this back just a little bit so I can put a clamp on here. And I'm just going to lightly clamp this and make sure that that's right. It needs a little adjustment. Okay, that's still good. All right, now that is good. I'm still going to put one more screw in. I'm gonna flip this over and I'll just do that off camera and do one more screw in the middle here just to make sure that this is good and sturdy in here. Perfect, it slides just perfect. All right, now let's check it. Let's get some wood in here and uh, see how well we did here. Now that we've built this little speed sled, what we want to do is check it to see how accurate it is. And first of all, I'm going to tell you what not to do. First of all, don't use skinny little pieces of wood like this. And the reason is there's not enough material here. You can't get an accurate enough, you know, it's only a couple inches that you're going to be measuring. You can't get an accurate enough measurement on a piece this small. The second thing is I, I highly recommend that you get a good quality square. These combination squares are most of the inexpensive ones are not accurate enough to give you a good quality reading. Um, at the very least, you want to have a good fixed steel square. In my case, I'm going to be using my accurate carpenter's square, and that's what I set this up with, and that's what I'm going to check it with to make sure that it is square. The whole purpose of making a sled like this is to be able to cut wider boards. Otherwise, we could just use our miter gauge that came with our table saw. And that's why you want to use a wider board. Today, I'm going to show you two ways of checking to see how accurate our little sled is here. The first thing I'm going to do, the first cut I'm going to do is just one single cut. And if you look at the bottom here, you see that I've got an arrow. That means that this is the edge that I ran through my jointer. So it's absolutely perfectly straight and flat. And that's the one I'm going to put against the edge. So for this first cut, all I'm going to do is run one nice wide cut here along this strip and we'll check it for accuracy. Okay, so there's the part that was against the back fence and I've got my square here. And I'll try and hold that up so you can see that. And I don't know, you're not, I don't think you're going to be able to see light through there because uh, there's not much light on my side. But what I have here is a piece of paper and I'm going to try and see if I can... I've barely got it in on the top, but see, if I pull that paper down, you can see that it's sticking. It won't fall through. I have to pull it to get it out. So that's a good tight fit. That, and for most of the cabinetry, uh, furniture making, anything we're doing woodworking, that is probably going to be sufficient. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make a three cut. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the base the way it is, so there's a B down there. I'm going to make the first cut I've already made here. Now I'm going to turn this around and do a second cut on this side. So if this was off by a couple thousandth of an inch and this one is also going to be off by another couple thousand, so it could be four. And I'm going to make a third cut on this side, and then I'm going to put my square in this area here, because remember, this is the, the, the one that was on the jointer, so this is the last cut that I want to check, and if it's accurate, then this square is dead on. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the second and third cuts, and we'll check that and see how accurate that is. Okay, let's have a look at this and see. There's the base. And there's our third cut. And when I put that on there, 
Uh, I don't know. Let's try that piece of paper and see if it'll go all the way through this time. It's looking pretty... No, it's looking pretty skinny. No, it's still not... It's still not wanting to fit in there. Yeah. There, see it's it's stuck in there. It won't it won't move up and down. So it's a good tight cut. Now the reason you would want to do a cut like this, most of the time this single cut on a wide board is going to be fine. The reason you might want to go multiple is if you were if you had a, a jig or a sled or a miter gauge that you were doing six or eight sided. Um, pieces and putting them together, those need to be extremely accurate. So in a case like this, a case like that with that many pieces, you would want to do something like this just to make sure that it's absolutely accurate. But uh, for what we're doing here, this is dead on. Well, that concludes my video for today. Uh, really super easy to make this speed sled for the table saw. Super accurate. And you know, for cutting wide boards, it's perfect. The laminated fence in the back will always be stable. And I only use construction grade plywood for the base. Um, so you know what? You don't need to spend a lot of money. You can make a good, accurate sled like this. I'm Colin Connett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.